Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Word. Thank you for communicating to us how much you love us and care for us and how much you want us to know about yourself, your Son Jesus, and your ways. Today as we study once again the book of Esther, I pray that you will bless us with the presence of your Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us into all truth. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you for empowering us to live according to your ways that we might be pleasing to you. And we give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Write for the Jews. And it's taken from the book of Esther, chapter 8 and verse 8. King Ahasuerus has begun his answer with to the tearful request of Queen Esther to save her people, the Jews, from the extermination inspired by Haman. Although Haman was dead, the law of the Persians was irreversible. In chapter 8 and verse 8 of the book of Esther, we see the king issue a writing that will help the Jews defend against the charge. We read, Write also for the Jews, as it likes you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. The verse begins, Write also for the Jews as it likes you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. Though the first law could not be reversed even by the king himself, there was no law that said another law could not be written to defend against the first one. King Ahasuerus defers the answer to both Queen Esther and Mordecai, who are before his throne in intercession. He says, write as it likes you. Or in other words, write what you would like the law to say. He adds that they may write their words in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring, which means he will stand behind whatever they write. The king knows their concern, and there is no one who will know better what to write than they. The verse goes on to say, For the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. King Ahasuerus knows the Persian law well, and he reiterates it for Queen Esther and Mordecai. He knows the first law to destroy the Jews has already been written and cannot be changed. However, if another law is written that defends against the first law, that also will not be able to be changed. Notice too, no man may reverse is the key component to what was written in both occasions. As we have shared previously, once the Persian law was in place, not even the king could alter it. What Queen Esther and Mordecai would write would be as much a law as the edict to destroy them. It might seem like a little simple statement, but God's word is God's word. What God has written, no man may reverse it. God is not fickle like man who changes laws all the time just for the sake of changing them, but rather he stands upon his word. As we consider the compassion of King Ahasuerus and his willingness to solve the problem for Queen Esther, let us keep in mind that God Almighty has written words that intervene on our behalf as well. Let's remember the words of the psalmist in chapter 1, 138 and verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth for you have magnified your word above all your name next time we will see the king's scribes get involved in this writing so read ahead and we shall join together then until tomorrow there is more and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.